subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button good evening welcome to south asia news line i'm lipakshi khurana Here are the top stories we're tracking for you on Tuesday the 1st of February. India unveils budget aimed at boosting spending to support growth. Taliban forms a joint ministerial committee to address durant line issues between Afghanistan and Pakistan. And Maldives government plans new law to curb anti-India protest. And now for all the details, Indian Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman on Tuesday unveiled the budget for fiscal year 2022-23 that aims to boost spending to support growth amid continued disruption from COVID-19 and rising inflation. Creation of jobs and preparations for new age technologies such as blockchain and 5G services are among the highlights of the budget. In what was her shortest budget speech ever, Sitaraman announced no changes in the income tax slabs or hikes in exempt. India's finance minister Nirmala Sitaraman on Tuesday unveiled the union budget for fiscal 2022-23 that proposes to step up spending to 529.7 billion US dollars to build public infrastructure and drive economic growth amid continued disruption from COVID-19 and rising inflation. Sitaraman announced a sharp jump of 35.4% in capital expenditure for infrastructure projects for the coming fiscal year to build expressways, affordable housing and solar manufacturing. India is targeting a deficit of 6.4% of the GDP, hoping to build on higher tax revenues and privatization of state firms, including a share sale of life insurance corporation and 5G spectrum auctions. Sitaraman said that the central bank would also introduce digital currency using blockchain and other supporting technology, while 30% tax on incomes from the transactions in such assets has been proposed. She however announced no changes in the income tax slabs or hikes and exemptions. The outlay for capital expenditure in the union budget is once again being stepped up sharply by 35.4% from 5.54 lakh crore in the current year to 7.50 lakh crores in 2022-23 calling the budget people friendly and progressive indian prime minister narendra modi said the budget is full of new possibilities for more infrastructure investment growth and more jobs The opposition, however, said there was lack of substance for common citizens in the budget. Extremely disappointing, a damp squib. There seems to be absolutely nothing in this budget. It's an astonishingly disappointing budget. In fact, when you look at uh, or listen to the speech of which we don't yet have a written text, no mention of Unrega, no mention of defence, no mention of any of the urgent priorities facing the public. Asia's third largest economy has been on the mend after the government lifted mobility measures last June to curb the coronavirus spread. The recovery from the pandemic has been swift but incomplete, officials say. Private consumption has been hampered by a lack of jobs, depleted household balance sheets and wider income inequalities. Hundreds of members of the Christian community on Monday took part in the funeral service of a Christian priest who was shot dead by unknown gunmen in Pakistan's Peshawar city as he returned home from Sunday mass. The incident has reignited fear amongst the community and brought back memories of a twin suicide bombing that killed scores of worshippers in 2013 in the same city. The killing of a Christian priest in northwestern Peshawar city has reignited fear amongst local parishioners and brought back painful memories of one of Pakistan's bloodiest attacks on the community in the same city. Gunmen shot and killed Pastor William Siraj and wounded his colleague Cleric Patrim Naeem as they drove home from Sunday mass. The funeral service for the slain priest was held on Monday, which was attended by hundreds of mourners. 
at the British colonial era All Saints Church in Peshawar. The site of a twin suicide bombing that killed scores of worshippers in 2013. Community in the high unsecure feel karti hai. Ham pehle bhi khud ko unsecure feel karte the. Aur jab jab aise vakyat hote hain, to uske baad se ye unsecurity hamare ham mazid bade jati. Christian religious leaders and the community members have demanded police to arrange more security for them. Tha ye ke sir ji ham log karte hain kam, ham aate hain late. To hume security deni chahiye aapko kyunki hume khatra hai. Ye kal ki wajah se jo hamara padri sahab hue shayad. Global Rights Watchdog Human Rights Watch said in a report released earlier this month that religious minorities in Pakistan continue to face violence as authorities fail to provide adequate protection or hold perpetrators to account. And moving on, amid the ongoing harsh winter season, residents in Gilgit Baltistan have urged the government to develop better road infrastructure and facilities to boost the tourism sector in the illegally occupied region. Continuous and heavy snowfall brings life to a standstill in Gilgit Baltistan, blocking roads and suspending electricity supply during winters every year. The picturesque landscape of Gilgit Baldistan attracts many tourists during the snowfall season. However, locals have lamented they are witnessing a downfall in tourist footfall due to government's apathy to develop better road infrastructure and facilities. The continuous heavy snowfall has brought life to a standstill in many parts, leading to road blockages and suspension of electricity supply, making it difficult for travellers and locals to commute. Locals have said better provisions for accommodation and connectivity could have boosted tourism and local economy, but authorities have turned a blind eye. Because the world of the people will be stopped here, they will come here, they will come here, they will get a hotel link, 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 they will get a hotel link. यहाँ हाइकिंग के हवाले से लोडिंग के हवाले से क्योंकि उनके लगेज हैं उनके बैगेज हैं उनको जो लेके जाएंगे अंदर चरागाहों में पहाड़ी रास्तों में जहाँ हाइकिंग के लिए आते हैं तो उससे एक बेहतरीन किस्म का जो है मैशियत पे असरअंदाज हो सकते हैं Locals blame Islamabad's indifferent attitude towards the region has affected all sections of the society Shopkeepers hoteliers and other small businesses in the region are all struggling with the economic fallout from the COVID-19 pandemic and the historical Duran line, the border between Afghanistan and Pakistan, often witnesses periodic skirmish between the two sides. The latest one after Pakistani forces allegedly tried to extend the barbed wire fences into the Afghan territory. Amid the ongoing border issue, the Taliban has formed a joint ministerial committee to address the problems and address the security issues that may potentially occur in the future. Amid border issues along the Duran line with Pakistan, the Islamic Emirate on Monday formed a joint ministerial committee comprised of several ministries to address the problems. The decision was made in a meeting chaired by the second deputy of Prime Minister of Afghanistan, Abdul Salam Hanafi. Inna Mullah Samangani, deputy spokesman for the Islamic Emirate, said, the objectives of the joint committee is to resolve the problems along the Duran line and address the security issues that may potentially occur in the future. The announcement follows the visit of Pakistan's National Security Advisor Moid Yusuf's two-day visit to Kabul. Yusuf held talks with several officials of the Islamic Emirate during his visit and both Pakistan and Afghanistan agreed to form a high-level committee to address the border issues. The Pakistan Foreign Ministry said in a statement that the objective of the visit was to discuss Pakistan's proposals for deepening economic engagement. The statement added that both sides also reiterated their commitment to early completion of the three major connectivity projects, Kaisa 1000, Tapi and Trans-Afghan Rail Project. The Duran line, the border between Afghanistan and Pakistan, continues to be a thorn on the side as both countries are unable to come to a mutually beneficial conclusion. Recently, both were engaged in a dispute after Pakistani forces encroached 15 kilometers inside Afghani territory to erect fences. Named after a British colonel from the 1890s, the Duran line is recognized by Pakistan and the international community. However, Afghanistan denies accepting it formally. 
In news from Maldives, members of the ruling Maldives Democratic Party are considering a legislation to criminalize protests that affect the country's relations with other nations. Reports suggest a draft bill is being circulated within the MDP in the backdrop of India out protest over the perceived proximity of government of President Ibrahim Mohamed Soli to India. The campaign has seen pace since the release of opposition leader and former pro-China President Abdullah Yameen from house arrest late last year. It asserts that a large number of Indian military personnel are present in the Maldives and that the government is planning to hand over the Uthuru Thila Falhut Atoll to the Indian Navy. Indian and Maldives had last year signed an agreement for the development of the harbour aiming to strengthen joint security. Mohammad Nasheed, the Speaker of country's legislative body Majlis, has already written to a parliamentary committee on national security to investigate the India out protest. The draft could be submitted when Majlis reconvenes on February 3rd. And the demand for electric blankets is on the rise in Srinagar in India's Jammu and Kashmir as people in the city continue to struggle through the harsh winters. Manufacturers are working round the clock to meet the demand. Meanwhile, cold weather conditions have also continued to persist across other parts of the northern India. As the minimum temperatures in India's Jammu and Kashmir continue to remain below zero degrees, many people are opting for electric blankets to keep themselves warm amid the ongoing harshest period of winters. The blanket manufacturers are working round the clock to meet the demand. These electric blankets are carefully designed to provide uniform and gentle warmth day and night. They are also generating good business for many people in Kashmir Valley who are earning their livelihood from it. जब से ये मार्केट में आई है पहले पहले तो सब इसे डरते थे क्योंकि इलेक्ट्रिक पे पावर पे सोना जब अवेयरनेस इसके बारे में लोगों में आ गई है तो अब सभी करीब करीब इस्तेमाल करते हैं हां बूढ़ों के लिए भी सेफ रहती है बूढ़ों को भी आराम रहता है इसमें और ज्यादा पावर का भी ज्यादा लेता नहीं है पावर भी लेता नहीं है ज्यादा मीनवाइल इन नेशनल कैपिटल न्यू दिल्ली रेजिडेंट्स वॉक अप टू अनदर फॉगी मॉर्निंग ऑन ट्यूसडे व्हिच अफेक्टेड विजिबिलिटी व्हाइल कोल्ड वेदर कंडीशंस कंटिन्यूड टू परसिस्ट Similar scenes were also witnessed in northern Patna city. South Asia's winters are not as cold as other regions such as North America, but the millions of poor here are hit harder because they live in an open and do not have enough warm clothes. Hindu devotees in northern India on Tuesday took holy dips and offered prayers on the occasion of Mauni Amavasya or Silent No Moon Day amid coronavirus pandemic. People perform rituals for salvation of their ancestors and give donations to priests or the needy. Hindu devotees in India's northern Varanasi city took holy dips in River Ganges and offered prayers on the occasion of Mauni Amavasya. and a species day when sun and moon enter capricorn sign according to hindu calendar amid corona virus pandemic braving the cold thousands of devotees undeterred by surging corona virus cases gathered on the banks and took holy dip disregarding mass discipline and flouting distancing protocols corona ke recovery rates hain bahut acche hain banaras mein corona ab yahan pe bahut kam hai aur jaise ki shraddhaluon ki jaise वो है नहाने की इच्छा है वो नहाएंगे तो है ही है लेकिन कोरोना से थोड़ा सा जो उनकी व्यवस्था को पालन करना चाहिए और बस यही है कहना है इतनी सावधानियां बरती जा रही है इतनी भीड़ है बहुत सावधानियां हैं पुलिस सबको मास्क लगाने के लिए बोल रही है और सबको दूरी बनाने के लिए भी बोल रही है काफ़ी अच्छी यहाँ पर व्यवस्था है इसमें बेनी माधव का दर्शन तिल से स्नान तिल का दान और नए सीजन का गुड़ भगवान को तिल और गुड़ अर्पण करना और मौन रह कर के जब तक स्नान ध्यान न कर ले तब तक आदमी मौन रहे और मौन रहने से उसको आत्मिक शांति और शरीर में ऊर्जा का जो है उसके शक्ति का जो है निर्माण होता है Similar scenes were witnessed in Prayagraj city where devotees were seen performing rituals at Sangam the confluence of holy river Ganges Yamuna and the mythical Saraswati People perform rituals for salvation of their ancestors and give donations to priests or needy Mauni Amavasya is observed every year in the month of January or February on No Moon Day as per the Hindu calendar 
It is believed that the water of the Ganges turn into nectar on this day. It is derived from the word Muni that literally means an ascetic who practices silence. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.